This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. The Creator, He sent us to this world to a very, very dangerous mission, to a very hard battle, to a very hard war against the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, the snake, the Satan, the devil, all kinds of forces of darkness and evil. When the Creator sent Adam Arishon, the first man, <coughs> and his wife, Chava, The Creator decided to hide the fact that He sent the snake with them to heaven. When we came down to heaven, we thought that it's going to be just like it sounds, heaven. Fruits all around, rivers, gold, animals, birds, butterflies, amazing smells, angels all around. We thought we were in heaven, but the Creator, He sent a snake with us into that holy garden without letting us know the danger and the risk. He told us, He commanded us, commanded us not to eat from the fruit of the tree of knowledge, etc. But we were not prepared and ready to this gigantic test against that evil, sneaky power of darkness. Now, after we failed in the first round, and then in the second, and then again in the third, and the fourth, and the fifth, we've been divided into bodies, into the children, and grandchildren and great-grandchildren of Adam and Eve. And today, every one of us is carrying a spark of those holy souls of our ancestors inside. But we feel so divided and separated from each other, we feel so lost and confused, that basically for us to understand even what the purpose is all about and what is Hashem will is almost impossible. If not that someone else will come from outside and gonna start hugging us and healing us and explaining to us what's the real purpose of our life. Because as individuals, we always feel that we must protect ourselves, defend ourselves, take care of ourselves, our selfish needs became like a survival mission. We're all just trying to breathe, to make a living, not to fight, not to be killed, not to be destroyed, not to be kicked out to the streets, and on. Now the Creator, He sent us to that mission, and every one of us, I'm sure, is wondering how come? How can it be? Sometimes life can be horrifying. There are certain hours in life that we're facing death, that we're facing scary hours that we're being left overwhelmed, amazed from the danger, from the pain of loss, from fears, anxieties, horrible feelings that we're experiencing through our lifetime, losing our beloved ones, losing houses, being exiled from one land to a foreign land, need to learn everything from head to toe, from A to Z, losing all the money in one day, getting sick, certain situations that are leaving us with our mouths open, insane, losing our minds because of the 
heaviness of that test, how hard it is. And terrified and after trauma from the thoughts of what can happen next. And people are running away and people avoiding commitments and responsibility and you can understand them. People are drinking and smoking and falling to worst even hardest drugs and you can understand. He can't deal with life, he can't live with the trauma, he can't live with the pain. So as believers that feels the commitment to the Creator, we want to go and fight and defend Him. We want to protect our own faith and we want to protect that honorable Creator that we believe in Him. We want to justify what that goes on here in this world. We want to say, no, it's all for the good. There is a reason for everything that happens. And it's written. Many righteous people along the years, they really revealed our eyes to believe. But we ourselves, finding ourselves questioning that truth in many situations in our lives. And every honest person going to admit that he found himself questioning the foundations of his own faith in certain hours of his life. And it's not a shame. Because like we said, sometimes the burden, the yoke, the troubles can be so heavy that they leave you with a feeling of a lost child, of an orphan. And you don't know what to answer. So, out of my honesty of dealing with my truth, I called Hashem yesterday night during Shabbat, not through my mobile, no worries. <laughs> Just called Him from our backyard here in the house that we're being hosted in. I did my hit bodedut, my individual prayer talking to the Creator like I speak with you right now from the bottom of my heart, just asking Him and talking to Him, praising Him and also questioning, asking what's going on. And the Creator opened my eyes in a very unique way and I wanted to share that with you. I think it's very important for you to hear. It was very powerful for me to understand those those deep aspects of life. So, in the beginning, before of creation, the world was not exist. There was only an endless sea of light, infinity. There was the Creator Himself and that's it. And His existence, His being, was filling the universe, the creation, the world, the infinity. It was only Him. It was not even a light. It was an endless beauty, good, united, with no definitions, with no dividings, with no constrictions, with no shapes, with no forms. All open and good and wide and rising. And then the Creator decided to create the world. Now for that, He took Himself to the sides, in a way. He found the central point inside that infinity and He moved Himself, so to speak, in a circle from that central point to the sides and created, so to speak, an empty space. A dark spot from godliness. And into that emptiness, into that darkness, He sent a beam of light back to that central point that from that point He started to remove His light and His godliness. Into that point He sent that beam of light that was bringing back, delivering, shipping that light from that endless source of light that is above. Now it became above. 
First of all, it was covering everything. But now when suddenly there was a place, there was a spot, so the light of infinity was above us. Like the world that we know today, that is round. And you're standing and the sky is always above you, even if you're up on the globe and even if you're down on the globe. There is no real up and down because it's all... You think you're up, you think he's down. But in reality, we're all around. We're circling that point of the central point of creation. Now into that central point, the Creator sent that beam of light from outside, from infinity, and started to build the worlds as we know them today. First of all, He built the city of Jerusalem. And then He built the Holy Land of Israel. And then the wide world been patched one piece after the other and created the globe as we know Him today. And the sky, the sun, the moon, all the animals, the trees, the flowers, and in the end also the human beings. Now for us, this world, that it's a physical world, that we can hold it, it's hard, it's solid, it's strong. For us, it's thick. And it's blocking the light of the Creator from our eyes. Because when we are looking, to the sky, to the brightest point, it's actually blocking the light of the Creator from our eyes. You look at the sun and, it, and it's blinding you from seeing heaven, from seeing the ancient source of all before of time, before of creation. You look at the sky, they can be bright blue, the most fantastic summer time, and it's blocking from you the ability to see what that is beyond. The world is blinding us from seeing the Creator. Our mission is to stand in the other side of that wall of the creation and to realize that there is a Creator to the creation. That someone sent us here. That we're not alone here in the universe that we're not being chased, that we're not being attacked, or not even enjoying and being blessed, just that there is a supervisor that is on top of everything, and His wisdom is running the system in fantastic unity that means everything, that is so deep and perfect, and above our limitations. That's our mission. Now, the question is, the verse is saying that the Creator created the world by blowing air from His so-called lungs, from His inside, down to this creation, to this world, Behevel Piv, with His breath. So, the righteous people are asking, so if He created the world from His inside, like we described before, like we explained before, He emptied Himself, moved Himself to the sides, and then He sent Himself, His beam of light. What's that beam of light? It's His light, it's Him. Because we said, before of that time, before of creation, there was nothing except of Him. So it's always only Him. Like the verse is saying, En od milvadot, there is nothing except of Him. So it's Him dressing Himself in coverings and putting Himself into His creation in a mission. Because there is nothing except of Him, right? We just now explained how our existence been cancelled, not exist. Who are you if there is nothing except of Him? You're nothing. You are only the way that He is expressing Himself through you. What that's so called? You. <coughs> now, you feel lost. You feel confused. You poor. You don't know what to do. You're afraid. I'm telling you, listen. It's not only that you're not alone and Hashem is over there looking at you. I'm telling you, listen. It's not you. It's Him. Who are you? 
You are him. You are chelak eloka mimaal. You are part of heaven from above. You are not Simcha, or Rachel, or Shira, or Moshe, or Aaron, or Yosef. You are dressings of the Creator Himself. You are all Malbushim, outfits, coverings of the Creator Himself. Who are you? You are Hashem. He doesn't give you the permission to sin. The Creator doesn't want to sin. It gives you the understanding that the Creator that is above is not only above. He is your soul and He is your life and He never sent you to a mission like that we are so easily thinking to ourselves, Oh, why am I here? Why do I need to go through all of those difficulties? But why did it happen to me? It didn't happen to you. It's happening to Him through you. You are Him and Him is you. When He created that curtain, when He built that war wall, that wall took Him to a challenge that also Him, even though that He's the Almighty, that He's above everything, that He can predict everything, that He can see beyond walls, even though when He created the world, He put Himself into that trouble. He sent Himself into prison, not you. You are experiencing Him. You're experiencing His prison because you are Him. Now, when I once spoke about a similar concept with a student of mine in Jerusalem, there was a very righteous man that was sitting and listening to our conversation and he called me aside and he told me, listen, if I would be you, I wouldn't speak like that. So I told him, why? First, let's hear your thoughts. So he said, he said because you are now telling Maaseh Merkava. You are telling now the story that is being called in Kabbalah the Holy Chariot of Heaven. How that all of this world is not really a reality and it's only a chariot that is carrying the Creator on its back. And there is nothing except of Hashem. Now when righteous people were talking and the Gemara, the Talmud is describing conversations of righteous people that are talking about Maaseh Merkava, that they were telling each other about the greatness of the Creator and how the Creator is huge and gigantic and above it all and that nothing can describe Him. Fire and flames of fire would come down from heaven and create fire of walls surrounding them and angels were singing like in a wedding and like amazing miracles would take place in those hours. Fruits would start bringing fruit, the trees would start bringing fruits out to the world and, and, and rivers would appear from nowhere and, and miracles and wonders would have happened. So that righteous man looked at me and told me, I wouldn't do it if I would be you. So I respected him, but as an individual that started his path of searching the truth from zero, trying to check with myself if I'm sure that I know my name, and then realizing that I have a religion, and then start baby steps toward my understanding of my true existence and mission in life and purpose in life. So as a person that was searching for the truth from zero, I decided that I will do whatever it takes to reveal the truth. Now, when those huge things coming to my mind, like I told you while I'm praying, and I'm asking Hashem and I'm blaming Him in my prayers, why are you doing that? 
Why that family is dying in a fire? And why those people lost their child? And why that person drowned in a swimming pool while he was happy and, and sober and healthy and just working out? And why that family lost their house? And why people are dying? And I'm asking, how can you, the Creator, not be with us? We're suffering. How do you let those things happen? And the Creator opened his heart to me and told me, I am the one that is suffering. In all of their sorrow, he feels that sorrow. Because he lives within. Because he is our soul. The sorrow that you're experiencing, it's his sorrow. You are him. And He is you. Kud Shabirichu, the Creator, and the Torah, the Bible, and us, the people, are one unit. Not in the books. Not in the Bible. Not in the ancient scripts. In reality, we are one. You and Him are one. You and Him and His wisdom are one. Just you feel divided, that's what he feels when he's in that darkness of exile. The pain of the sorrow that we feel is the pain of Kudsha Brichu and Shchinte, of the Creator Himself. That been divided, that been separated from His source. And that's why there is another name to the souls of our people, and they're called, being called. Maim Bochin, crying water. That's who that we are. We are crying water that are crying to the source of water that delivered us here and separated us by that from our father and from our mother, so to speak. From the source of our creation, from the source of our life. So from that understanding, you need to get only one message. Don't give up. Don't back off from your dreams, from your inner faith in yourselves, from that good that you desire. Don't back off from that mercy. You need to remind yourselves of who that you are and I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you now a proof and an evidence that the Creator is so merciful, so kind, that He's the one that is waking us up now and you are now, I'm telling you. It's not a secret anymore. I'm online. I received a green light from heaven to deliver the redemption to our nation, to the wide world. And I'm going to tell you, you're going to understand right now how that the Creator Himself is waking us up to come back to above nature and we, in this generation, are about to experience the complete redemption. The real redemption. The one that there is no death after it. No more war. No more sicknesses. Everyone are happy and healthy and strong and powerful and smiling to each other. No more arguments between the, the neighbors. No more fights in the houses. Peace and harmony and love. Salvation. Animals are playing along. All the creation is blooming and shining and rising. And there is peace and confidence. Redemption. Not religion. Not Haredi religion. Redemption of the wide world, of all of the nations, of all animal species are talking and chatting and jumping together in the fields, the forests, the deserts, filling the world with smiles and songs. People holding hands and singing and praising from their hearts because they feel gratitude. Real redemption! that we forgot about because of the exile and the pain and the sorrow and the troubles of thousands of years of pain and loss. A real redemption of above nature. And I know I'm waking you up to rethink about your existence, about the real mission of our life. I know. It's my mission. 
because I was searching with truth and I keep on searching with truth. So He's revealing the truth to me and my truth is to share. My truth is not to treasure my own success to myself. I can't. I hate it. I don't want it. I want to give it to you. I want to see you smiling and not coming with broken faces to my classes. I want to see you all growing and glowing and succeeding. Now I'm asking you, if someone is in trouble, we know in the nature of the world when someone is in trouble, so he's screaming. Now, if there are two people that are suffering together, who are going to scream first? The one that is suffering more, right? If you're going to push two people, the one that feels more pain going to scream. It might be that you push even less, but he's more sensitive. But he will scream out of his sorrow and out of his pain, right? Right. Now, when you woke up, when you woke up to search for the Creator, why you woke up, it's true. From that moment that you woke up, you started calling Hashem, you started screaming. You start saying to Hashem, to the Creator, Hey, who am I? What's going on? It's amazing. Please answer my prayers. I need you to help me. I want to learn Torah. I want to pray. I want to do this. I want to get married. I want to have children. Great. From that moment that you woke up, you started screaming. I agree. Wonderful. You did your job perfectly. But I'm asking you, who was screaming first? The one that was suffering more. Hashem was screaming from your soul, from within, Look for me! I exist! He was calling first. He was calling you. And He called strong enough that you woke up. And when you woke up, you felt the pain and start screaming. But who felt the pain first? Who was suffering more? Him. He is calling us from within all of the time. Search for me like the verse is saying, Lecha amar libi bakshu panai tamid. Your heart is my messenger to tell you always, look for my face. He is screaming from our souls from within. Search for me. Look for me. And you know what happened to him? I'm going to tell you what happened to him. And it's a nightmare. What that happened to the Creator after creation, after creating the world, he created a system. He created a physical world with a certain rules of nature that after creating it, he became obligated to it. And after that, he sent those beams of light, those are our souls, his soul, that godly soul, Chelek Eloka Mimal, the part of soul that comes from above. After he sent that beam of light into physicality, into physical bodies, what happened to those souls? They forgot who they are. Who forgot who he is? He forgot who he is. Who? The Almighty. He, for us, in our bodies, not above. In heaven He sees, in heaven He knows. But now, while being trapped inside of us, He doesn't remember who He is. That's why you don't remember who you are. That's why it's so hard for you to be strong. That's why you're falling to lust and desires. You know who is falling to lust and desires? He is the one that fell with us to the lowest, most contaminated places in the world, like the, the verses are saying, I'm not making up. It's all written black fire on white fire in the Bible. I'm quoting verses for you. Bechol tumotam, shochenitam bechol tumotam. He is with them inside all of their contaminations. There is only one place that he cannot be. What is that place? When the person is saying, I have a certain existence of my own. I'm an individual. I'm arrogant. He becomes to be arrogant. So Hashem is saying, me and him cannot be in the same place. What does that mean? That when you think 
that you are someone of your own and you're not connected to a spiritual source that are bringing you to be one with unity with the Creator, you are separating yourself from Him and you're cutting His finger. You're killing parts of His godliness by being arrogant, by taking possession on God, by thinking to yourself that you have a certain existence, that something is you own, that something is yours and it's mine. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's the world. It's life. You're part of life. You are part of the creation. You're not an individual. You're a beautiful shade of the Creator. You're an amazing color of the Creator. You're an amazing way that the Creator chose to express His beauty. His endless beauty. So He gave so many faces, with so many deep eyes, with so many amazing thoughts and billions of songs and lyrics and musics and tunes and amazing trees and leaves and thousands and thousands, millions of, of animals and smells and sounds and feelings, deep emotions, but they are all only the way of expression of the one in his world. Now we, in our prayers, what are we doing? We're telling him, please reveal your mercy. Why should we tell him? Aren't we know that for sure that he knows that, that we need him? Please, you are Rofei Cholei Amo Israel. You can heal all your nation. You can heal all the world. Why, can we, why should we tell him that? Doesn't he know that he can heal everyone? It's in his power. Because that after that he created the world, created the world that is blocking the light from his unity, from that moment and on, like we said, the souls forgot who that they are. The Creator been divided from His own self, from His eternity, from infinity. So now we need to remind ourselves who we are. And who we are, we are Him. We need to remind ourselves of that. When the righteous man decrees, the Creator keeps His decree and answers His prayer. Why? Why did the Creator will answer that righteous man? Because that righteous man is connected to the Source. He's connected to His real being. He knows the nature of His creation. He knows that He is a hand, a finger in the hands of the Creator. He knows that He is a messenger. He is nullifying Himself completely to the King of all kings. So the soul that lives inside of Him remembers exactly who that she is so He can bring down to this world bounty, salvations, miracles, wonders, because He remembers. So I'm reminding you right now who you really are. Bnei Elyon Kulchem Children of God, you are all. It's a verse. Bnei Elyon, the children of the Creator. All of us. The Creator never left us. He lives among us. He lives inside of us. And He is limited because He is tied to our inner thoughts. And when we don't believe in ourselves, and when we are slaughtering ourselves, and blaming ourselves, and hating ourselves, we are blocking His ability to express His beauty, His greatness and grace. By being selfish and rude and cruel and violent to each other. But when we are gluing ourselves to His attributes, to His midot, and we become mercy and nice and patience and loving and generous and honoring and respecting and supporting and caring, we are not become righteous. 
We're delivering the Creator back to His creation. We're delivering the water that are washing the world from its filth, from its lack of memory, from the fact that we forgot who we are. The world is a system of rules that's been set by the Divine Governor. He can change the rules of nature as He wish. If today people are dying after certain years, the Creator can change it, that they will never gonna die again. For you there is nature. The Creator is above nature. The nature works by the rules that the Creator set for him. If it said in the first generations that the person will live 1,000 years and Adam asked to give 70 years of his life to King David because King David was not able to come down to the world but first man, Adam, Adam, he thought that it's important that King David will come so he was generous enough to give 70 years of his life to King David in the future so the Creator listened to his prayer and then first man lived 930 years. Okay, so in the beginning people could have lived 930 years. Why? Because they were more healthy, there was no pollution, there was no AIDS. What do you think was the reason? No cancer? No! Hashem wanted him to live 930 years, that's it! And when people start sinning more and more and more, the Creator said, hey, it's enough, enough, it's enough, I can't stand you. Too many years, no way. How, you know how much damage a person can cause in 930 years? Look at yourself. Look at yourself, how much damage you caused in 50 years already. Oh, please Hashem, stop me. Stop me because of, before I'm killing someone, before I'm killing myself, stop me. It's an honest prayer. It's an honest prayer. Hashem it barachsa, people are dangerous, people are, are crazy, losing their minds, getting evil. So Hashem it barach put more and more limitations on us that we won't destroy. Thinking with his wisdom, understanding exactly what will be good and what will, what will be the right way. But when he will decide to uncover his greatness, in one moment the world will be different. When you will fall in the street, suddenly the grass will grow and gonna protect you like a, like a mattress. When you will be thirsty, there's gonna be a river that will just gonna jump to your cup. Everything will be per perfect. There will be no more lackings. It will be heaven. That the angels will cook for us like they were cooking for Adam and Eve in heaven in the ancient days. You won't be worried by Parnassah, by looking for money. You won't have to think about those things anymore. The Creator will provide your needs. And I'm reminding you of that. That you will know that that's who you are and start believing in yourself and go and pray and go and call Hashem and set Him free in your own houses, in your own families. Set the light of Hashem free. Be Hashem. Let Hashem be. Express Hashem. Talk about Hashem. Say about Hashem. Your thoughts, your understanding. Share. Not to be religious. I'm screaming to you. Don't think that religion is the answer. Religion is not the answer. The truth is the answer. Now if you find the truth in Judaism, amazing, perfect, go with it. But if you find yourself still not ready and building yourself out of scratches, out of your destruction of last year, or, or I don't know which kind of, of sorrow that you experience and you're not able to run, in a certain speed, breathe, relax. The Creator, He loves you in unconditional love and He wants you to heal. So if now your healing is to eat well and to sleep well and to see a way how to stop consuming drugs, so okay, work on that for now. Wait with Tfilin Rabbeinu Tam and taking out Shabbat one hour and a half after time. Breathe, relax. Hashem will stay with you. Because Hashem is with you when you see it and when you can't. 
There are times that when you want to do things for Hashem, you need to break some rules. And it's also written in the verses. It's written in the Mishnayot. Et la'asot l'Hashem, eferu toratecha. There are certain times that if you want to do for Hashem, you need to violate the rules of the Torah. And I'm not telling you to violate rules. You should keep as much as you can. Kol asher timtza yadcha bekochacha ase. As much as you can find with your power to do, you should do. But when you see that you're getting too hard on your children, and when you see that you're getting too hard on your husband or on your wife, when you're getting too hard on your students or getting too hard on yourself, it's time to breathe and to relax and to ask yourself, what am I doing? Is that the mission that I've been sent to? Is that really the purpose of my life, to fight with my wife that she's not covering your head? Maybe sit with her and have a long conversation to understand why it's so hard for her to cover her head. Maybe you're always looking on other women's hair. Maybe she wants to be beautiful in your eyes. Maybe she never receives compliments from you and she must receive some compliments so she has to ask from someone else. Maybe that's the reason that it's hard for her to cover her head. And now you're blaming yourself. I'm not waking up in the mornings. I'm not praying in a minyan. I'm not catching to shul. I'm not doing this. I'm not reading the Bible. Monday, Thursday, Saturday. Okay, maybe there's a reason for that. Maybe when you were a child, your parents that were also in the exile, they never knew how to educate you in a wise way. And they were screaming at you, Get up, you lazy one! What's going on with you? And were kicking you out of bed. I don't know, everyone carries his own story. Maybe you hate to wake up in the mornings. Maybe your life is too hard for you and you don't know how to deal with the new day. Maybe you really rather to hide yourself in the bed and to cry. Maybe you're too shy to show your face in the synagogue when you don't know the rules. Maybe you have things that are rejecting you. First step is to make peace with yourself. Accept yourself. Try to understand yourself. And not to judge and criticize yourself and change yourself. No! I must to change! I must be better! I must improve! You're not able, brother. You're not able. You're going to kill yourself in that route. It's a dangerous route for you. You're going to kill yourself. That's not the path of life. I'm not saying don't keep. Just keep as much as you can and pray for the rest. Go to Hashem and ask Him, Hashem, listen, I have a problem in the mornings. Wow! I don't know how to deal with it. The morning's worse than the night, I don't know. Can you give me some strength? It's written that you're giving power to those tired ones. Can you give me some of that power? Because I'm tired. And I can't see the way out from that tiredness. Hashem, I'm sad. Hashem, I'm depressed. Hashem, I can't focus in my learning. Hashem, it's so hard. Shabbat, wow, it's so long. Talk about it with Hashem. Don't break, don't violate. But don't lose your honesty. As you're searching for the truth, don't drop it. And choose religion instead. Religion is not a solution. Religion should present the truth. So if you cannot find the truth through religion, something is wrong, try to set it. Try to find the reason for it. Why it doesn't click? Why it doesn't link? Why it doesn't happen? I'm praying, I'm giving my maiser, I'm keeping Shabbat, I'm eating kosher, I'm not happy. I'm not rich, I'm not holy, and my wife, she's not happy. Something is wrong, right? All the promises 
were the opposite. You're going to keep Shabbat, you're going to eat kosher, you're going to put filin, you're going to give your maiser, done, you're rich. I don't know, doesn't work for me. <laughs> Never worked, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm 20 years in this game, never happened to me. Now you're going to start with your scams and blaming and your parents and my wife and the rabbi of the community and my chavruta and this and it's so hard and a shame and you're making it too hard for me. Why? Why to go in that bent way? So relax, relax, stop, breathe, open your prayer with the truth. Hi, say to Hashem, hi, what's going on? How are you? How was Shabbat? <laughs> what? Hashem, Hashem didn't, wasn't here with us in Shabbat. He was. Hashem, I hope you're good. Hashem, I hope you're happy. I hope you're fine. I hope it was nice. We came to synagogue. It was wonderful. I hope you enjoyed our Suda Shlishit, Hashem. I hope I was good. Thank you. Thank you for everything you did for us. It was amazing. For us it was nice. But you know, it was a little bit hard. Now I'm thinking about it. Be honest. Start opening your heart. And when you're going to open your heart, you're going to remember who you are. The light will start shining from within. And the Creator will explain to you, like I expressed, like I told you about my, my prayer yesterday night. When you're standing in front of the Shekhinah and opening your mouth, the Shekhinah starts opening her mouth with you. When you're talking to Hashem, Hashem is answering to you. Hashem is close to everyone, to everyone that will call Him with truth. Call Him with truth. Tell Him your heart. Tell Him I'm thirsty. Tell Him I'm dry. Tell Him please can someone bring you a cup of water. Come on, no one listens. I'm thirsty, I'm dry. Please, someone can bring you a cup of water. Nothing. Hey, guys, someone can bring you a cup of water. <laughs> Nothing. Thank you, thank you. Chazaku Baruch Hashem will bless you. Thank you very much. We will. Thank you. Please help us. We're a non-profit organization. We have a five, uh, five oh one, five out. Oh, what's the name? Five oh one. What? R2D2, C3PO, what? 501C3, a nonprofit organization in the US. Please help us. We're saving lives of thousands of people around the world. Please support us. Emuna.com, that's our website. Emuna with an H. It's very important that you will not going to forget Hashem. Right? H Hashem, Emuna in Hashem. Emuna with an H. Emuna.com, that's the name of our organization. Please, thank you so much. Baruch, Ata Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Shakol Niya Bidvaro. Amen. Thank you. So, please help us. Our website is amazing. We have more than 1,500 videos of my lectures over there and more people that are talking in the same spirit and the same wave. And we're inviting you to enjoy our books, children books, CDs, and also adult books that I wrote. And um, please, please, please take that lesson to the long run. And remember who you are, and Hashem will bless you always. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.